We saw in the particle in a finite potential well problem that the particle can be found in the walls of the potential. This fact has profound implications in terms of free particles hitting barriers. Classically, if a particle is to overcome a barrier, it must have sufficient energy to climb over it. For quantum particles, however, this is not the case. Regardless of their energy, there is a probability that they will tunnel through the barrier and emerge on the other side. This is because the wave function is non-zero inside finite potential barriers. Therefore, the particle exists inside the barrier and, as a result of satisfying boundary conditions, must also have a chance of being on the far side of the barrier, even if it has insufficient energy to climb over it. In order to quantify the solution to the Schrodinger equation, we first need to step back and look at which parts of the solution represents a particle moving in which direction. Given the typical solution to a particle when the potential is zero, being psi is equal to a e to the i k x plus b e to the negative i k x, then we can determine the direction that a particle is traveling in by applying the momentum operator to each part. In the left column, we take the positive complex exponential and apply the momentum operator. We get an eigenvalue as well as the eigenfunction returned to us. We can see that the eigenvalue, which represents the momentum of that state, is kh bar. The positive sign of that result means that the particle described by that wave function is traveling to the right, or positive x direction. Conversely, the negative complex exponential ends up with a negative solution. Therefore, it represents a particle traveling to the left. The setup for the potential of the system is the opposite of that of the finite potential well. In regions 1 and 3, the potential is 0, and in region 2, the potential is a finite value denoted as u0. Again, we solve the Schrodinger equation for all three regions. As will be shown in a second, in region 1, we get a wave function solution which represents the incoming particle traveling to the right as well as the reflected particle bouncing off the barrier. In region 2, in the potential, there are two decaying exponentials. Finally, for region 3, there is only one wave function solution, one that represents the particle traveling to the right. There is no solution for a particle traveling to the left in region 3 since that means that the particle originally came from the right, which isn't true. Therefore, we could ignore that part of the solution. So let's now solve the Schrodinger equation for all three regions, being regions 1, 2, and 3, and discuss what the solutions to those regions represent. So in region 1, again, we start off with the Schrodinger equation, negative h bar squared over 2m, t squared psi by dx squared, plus u times psi is equal to e times psi, in this region, u is equal to zero, so that term disappears. I'm left with a differential equation that when I simplify, it looks like this. d squared psi by dx squared plus 2me over h bar squared times psi is equal to zero. We use our standard solution wave function, se to the rx. And so what that leaves us with in the end, since we've solved this many times already, psi is equal to a e i 2 m e over h bar times x plus b e negative i root 2 m e over h bar times x. Region 3 shares the exact same solution, again starting with the wave function negative h bar squared over 2m t squared psi by dx plus u times psi is equal to e times psi. Again, the, the potential is equal to zero in that region, so we can get rid of it. And so what we end up in the end is psi is equal to e times e i root 2m e over h bar square root of 2me times x plus f e to the negative i root 2me over h bar times x. Finally, in region 2, in this case, the potential is non-zero. It's equal to u naught. So we have to include that in the Schrodinger equation, minus h bar squared over 2m d squared psi by dx squared plus u times psi is equal to e times psi. In this case, I'll just sub in explicitly the u naught. 
We've already solved this equation or this differential equation previously when we looked at the finite particle in a box. d squared psi by dx squared 2m u naught minus e all over h bar squared times psi. I move that over to the other side. d squared psi by dx squared minus 2m u naught minus e all over h bar squared times psi is equal to zero. So what this means in the end is that my psi is going to be equal to c e to the 2m u naught minus e, all that square rooted over h bar times x plus d e to the negative 2m u naught minus e square root over h bar times x. So now let's take a look at what each of these solutions represent. So again what we have here is we have a particle that's going to be traveling towards the well and it has an energy E that's less than the potential, meaning that it can't overcome the barrier alone just based on the energy that it has. What would classically happen is that then the particle would just bounce off the barrier. But since we know that there's a wave function solution psi inside the barrier, then we're going to have a probability which we will determine where we're going to have basically the particle tunneling through the barrier or appearing on the other side of the barrier. So when we apply the momentum operator to all of these terms, we see that the particle that's traveling to the right, which is the initial one, is this one, which is this first term, a e to the i root 2 m e over h bar times x. This is the initial particle which is basically, when we set up this problem, we would say that the particle travels from the left to the right in region 1. The reflected one, when we apply the momentum operator to this term, we find that that represents a particle moving to the left. So that means this b e to the negative i root 2 m e over h bar times x, this is the reflected solution for this problem. Looking over in region 3, when we apply the momentum operator to these two terms, we see that the e, e to the i, root 2 mu over h bar times x, this one is the tunneled particle, because that represents a particle moving to the right, whereas this f term, f e to the negative i, root 2 me, uh, root 2 me over h bar times x, that represents a particle moving to the left, which does not occur in this problem, and so that's a solution that we can completely ignore. In region 2, we have these two solutions where they are essentially two decaying exponentials, but when I say decaying, I mean one is decaying to the right and the other is decaying to the left. But they both occur inside the potential. And so it is the combination of these five pieces that we would end up solving boundary conditions for. But in the end, what we want to find, and this is something that is true for all of quantum mechanics is that these terms that are these constants that appear in front of the wave function solutions they represent probabilities of finding that state or at least when you take the the complex conjugate times the value itself it represents a probability of finding that state so in the end what we want to find if we want to find the probability of a particle tunneling through the barrier well if all the incident particles represent this initial case, which is this a e to the i root 2 m e 2 m e over h bar times x, then that means the, the a term represents all the initial particles, which is what we're starting with. If we have, say, a stream of particles hitting this barrier, then they are all quantified by this a constant, or at least that's the total number of particles. e would then represent the total number of particles that have tunneled through the barrier. And so if we then calculate that ratio of e squared over a squared, then what that tells us is, is the tunneling probability of this particle going through the barrier. So as was just stated, the coefficients in front of wave functions are used to determine the probabilities of that particular wave function to be measured once a measurement takes place. To find this probability, take the value and multiply it by its complex conjugate just like any other time we use the wave functions to calculate probabilities. 
Since the incident particle has a coefficient a, then a becomes the baseline to measure the probability of the particle tunneling through the, the barrier. The coefficient e is from the state that represents the particle moving to the right on the right side of the barrier. Therefore, to calculate the tunneling probability, we divide e squared by a squared. The result found through applying the boundary conditions where the wave function and the derivative of the wave function must be continuous at the boundaries of the potential is 1 over 1 plus e raised to the power of kappa a minus e raised to the power of negative kappa a all squared divided by 4 times e over u naught times 1 minus e over u naught and this is where kappa is equal to the square root of 2m times u naught minus e all divided by h bar here is a plot of the transmission probability as a function of e over u naught where u naught is equal to 10 on this plot, any value on the x-axis greater than 1 means that the particle is sufficient energy to overcome the barrier without tunneling. As can be seen, the maximum tunneling probability occurs when the particle has an energy about twice as high as the barrier itself. But then right after that, the tunneling probability dips before slowly climbing back up again.